I will be spending 10 hours in Guild Wars 2, one of the most well-known MMOs of all human existence, remaining a popular pick for players 10 years after release. Today we explore the expansive world of Tyria, filled with hilarious creatures, ridiculous combat, and classes all tied together with an immaculate story adventure. I will also be challenging myself to complete 5 unique objectives to figure out if Guild Wars 2 is actually a good experience in 2023. If I fail to complete all 5 of my goals, I will delete my character permanently at the end of the video. Hour 1 threw me right into the character selection process where I could pick between 5 races, a big bad wolf that ate my grandma last Tuesday, a human built for the NBA, a regular human, and also a grass pokemon for whatever reason. But the obvious choice was clear. Yeah, let's be a baby Yoda, you know? Next were the 9 unique classes. A lot of them stood out like the Revenant and Engineer, but ultimately my decision came down to the complexity level as I wanted to go with the most difficult class. Customization was heavily detailed, you could really adjust and enlarge certain body parts the way you want. You've done a really great service there Guild Wars. Curating the ultimate Chad, Baby Yoda the Mazarine, aka a billion IQ engineer. Receiving backstory on my character's race, the Asura, I personify genius. I'm thrusted into a chaotic situation with rampant technology causing trouble. The world feels extremely alive, you have people fighting. Not even 5 minutes into the game, I start my first boss fight, facing what seems to be a futuristic version of chat GPT. You're goaded if you get that reference. Showing how rapid of a pace everything is moving, a very pleasant surprise. This continues into the actual questing, which clearly had a lot of effort put into it. From experimenting on golems, becoming an assistant teacher for the youth, to defeating mentally ill humanoid frogs, yes you heard that right, the question diversity is shocking. This continued until I unlocked the greatest ability of all time, kind of realistic when you think about it, what I like to call the sticky glue. Hour 2 hitting level 10, I can now weapon swap, allowing me to completely switch my moveset on the go, adding 4th dimensional combat flexibility. Now on the main story, as a Asura, I'm a super intelligent race that creates the most wild technologies, and unfortunately a lot of it seems to malfunction or get used for evil. For this specific quest, I was searching for ancient tech relics that apparently everybody and their mother wanted to stop me from obtaining. Immediately I noticed how silky smooth and responsive Guild Wars 2 combat and mobility is. Here come take my sticky glue. Continuing the story leveling at supersonic speeds, I unlock some cool abilities like rocket boosting forward and whoa, and equipping a med kit, fundamentally making me a pop up shop healer on the go. As time went on, I slowly started to realize Baby Yoda the Mazarine really is that guy, with the amount of nonchalant cool things he randomly does. I enjoy sticking it to the inquest whenever possible. Me too. That makes two of us. Hey! Entering hour three, I still have not done a single objective on my list. It was looking like Baby Yoda was gonna get deleted by the end of the video, as Guild Wars 2 was doing everything in its power to distract me with immersive story content. Turn back now, or I'll enjoy desecrating your bones. Me infiltrating an underground laboratory, bobbing, weaving, threatening traps, and fighting sentient electric spiders. I think. Towards the end of hour 3, the wildest thing I've ever experienced in an MMO occurred, scarring me for life. This ooze is literally shaking booty right now. Huh? Look at him twerking and stuff, god damn! Heading into hour 4, I left my starter zone entering the Brisbane Wildlands. While exploring, I ran into a cool mechanic, what I like to call random events. While questing, you'll stumble upon the oddest situations marked as orange circles on your map, making Tyria feel very alive and dynamic. In my random event, I helped rat creatures rob someone of their belongings. Huh? Which now thinking about it, doesn't that make me a criminal? While completing this objective, I ran into other fellow billion IQ engineers and saw them with the coolest build ever. Let's play some flamethrower build though. For the rest of the hour, I got a great deal of grinding done, which unlocked a lot of engineer abilities for myself. Essentially the way it works, every few levels grants you hero points, you use these points to unlock abilities from different skill trees. As well, each ability you equipped on your Ludo gives you a respective other ability that you can see from my F1 to F5 bar, making it an incredibly complex build an IQ system with lots of options. Honestly, if you've never played an MMO, this would be ridiculous to dive into. I would most definitely recommend read a Guild Wars encyclopedia ASAP or subscribe to my channel for insane amounts of good luck. 
Hour 5, I started to notice how well designed everything was. Every 10 levels, you unlock new main story that expands upon the world of Tyria, with characters being introduced getting further character development. Also now being in the level 30s and Guild Wars max level being 80, I'm damn near 50% done the leveling experience in less than 5 hours, really showing how fast the game is going. Yeah. Damn! Yeah, damn! At this point in the game, the main story started to give multiple pathways I could choose between. A rare mechanic you don't see in many MMO. Multiple choices again, huh? As making the same exact character, but taking slightly different actions could give you an extremely different end result. Despite being an older game, Guild Wars 2 has aged relatively well, which is mainly due to its detailed cartoony style, but I would love to see a graphical revamp down the line. That bear, does that bear have a dumpy? It does, god damn. Whoa, whoa. That is the sickest transmog armor I've ever seen. The glorious transmog I witnessed prompted me to complete my first objective of the video and upgrade my character's drip. Within Guild Wars, you have multiple dyes you can unlock, making your character look fabulous. Me previously playing the game in 2012, I had a lot of options. Whoo, that is clean. I had four more goals to go, otherwise Baby Yoda was gonna get Thanos snapped out of existence. Hour six, I decided to delve into a major component of Guild Wars 2, world exploration, AKA running around every nook and cranny looking for cool things. This entire MMO is designed and provides rewards for seeking different objectives you can find on a map. From questing, to floating maps, to waypoints and random trials, there's a bunch of elements you can find in every single zone. My adventure continues into line Arch, a beautiful massive player's hub filled with all sorts of trouble to get into. And while exploring the city, I climbed the tower, started undressing, brought some interesting protection, in the form of goggles of course, and took a leap of faith into the water, performing world record diving maneuvers. Hour 7, I had an aha moment and realized Google is my best friend. I could search up the closest jump puzzle to complete my next objective on my list. This puzzle conveniently happened to be in Lion's Arch, starting with me inserting myself into a hole, following a blue spirit down a dark maze with false walls. It was surprising how much detail was put into this puzzle that can easily be missed if you're not actively searching for it. This led me into an insane dark death trap corridor where I literally perform matrix maneuvers I make it to the end completing the jump puzzle, which is by far one of the funnest things I've done so far in Guild Wars 2. Beautifully designed and a standout feature in this MMO. Completing my objective, leaving three more to go with three hours to spare, time was ticking. Hour 8, curiosity struck me and I started exploring the PvP game modes, which is one of the objectives I have to complete. In Guild Wars, this is called World vs World, with multiple types of game modes to do. You engage in massive wars of other players, capturing points, and asserting your dominance. Loading into the game, I spawned on a floating airship surrounded by clouds. I damn near thought I was in heaven. One of the coolest looking PvP maps I've seen in an MMO. This looks crazy. Doing a bit of exploring, I got extremely lucky and ran into an active guild group called Cute and joined them on their domination quest, capturing points and jumping solo players. Yo, we're folded, we're jumping one dude. It was a really fun experience, but I was struggling to get that final killing blow on a player. As in Guild Wars 2, to confirm a kill on your own, the best way is getting off an execute ability. I was getting really worried that it would be damn near impossible for me to get a kill on my own in such a big group. But then, an opportunity arised. Me and a few other players from my group were jumping this one guy, giving me a limited window to get the final killing blow. Sticky glue. Get folded. Mmm, it, yo, I stuck a flag in a really interesting spot. Completing my objective and getting one step closer to preventing Baby Yoda the Mazarine from getting deleted at the end of the video. Hour 9, I rushed straight to the next objective of completing a typical MMO dungeon. Using the looking for group tool, I found a team of qualified individuals and I did a little bit of a background check. Entering the Ascalonian catacombs, it dramatically changed my perspective on Guild Wars, with more eerie and dark visuals. This looks cool. Progressing through the dungeon as a group, we were provided three pathways to choose between each giving completely different experiences of the dungeon according to my teammates. I don't think I've ever played an MMO that gave you alternate routes to choose between in a dungeon, another outstanding quality of Guild Wars 2. Performing some parkour movements, we faced our first mini boss, a disgusting looking spider queen. Let me tell you, this was insane. Red circles would spawn and if you got hit by even one of them, it would be damn near insta-death. 
Holy goodness, bro. That was insane. We succeeded and pushed through, barely making it through traps and hard trials. But somehow we made it to the final boss. But then something unfortunate happened. My computer ran out of space and almost blew up. So I lost the rest of the dungeon footage. Well, technically, since I did it, I'm gonna count the objective, but it is definitely controversial. Maybe on hour 10, I had one last goal to achieve, explore a vastly different zone from the one I started in. So I checked the world map real quick and decided to go with the snow area as it reminded me of my current outside climate. I jumped on my trusty raptor and made my way to the land of Holbrack. But before getting into any type of exploration, I had to check something first. Are the kids taller than me? I'm half the kid's size. What? Adventuring through the snow area was a great experience. Climbing mountains, chasing rabbits, and doing the most random things was oddly pleasant. These last 10 hours showed me the beauty of Guild Wars 2. Completing my final objective on my list, something felt wrong. I feel like I didn't get to fully show me completing the dungeon in the video. So plot twist, sad to say, but Baby Yoda's getting deleted. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe for future content. Check out this video next if you're interested to see how popular Guild Wars 2 is in 2023. Thank you. Peace.